Today we're going to talk about one of the most important parts in machine learning, which is related to how to train an algorithm. I'm going to talk about neural networks and overfitting neural networks, but actually I'm going to discuss a method which is called gradient descent that you can use even in, regre in linear regression. So the idea behind uh, overfitting is related to this kind of picture. So imagine that you take a lot of pictures of uh, white American uh, individuals and then you use that those faces to train a network in which basically th the input is the face and the output are some very rough pictures uh, in this image and then you try to use this neural network to reconstruct or to classify the face then you, you take Barack Obama and then you pixelate the image and, and, uh, and use this neural network to reconstruct and you end up with something which is overfitted in the sense that this is more accurate for the data set that you use for training but it's not good generalizing here is another exam example. This is kind of scary. So he, the idea here was using real images and using some uh, sophisticated methods related to hidden layers and something that I want to talk about in another video, which is convolutional neural networks. Basically, they were trying to f to to find out which parts of the picture are related to different animals or different plants. And then when you use part of this picture, imagine that you take this picture and you, you are telling the neural network, okay, tell me how many animals you have here and reconstruct those animals, you, you get a picture more or less like this. And this is kind of a scary because here, of course, you don't see any of these animals and here you look like you're in the garden of mutants. Okay, let's do things simpler. So let's load this data set that you can download in, in the description. You have a link in the description. The, the variable y is going to be a factor, it's going to take the values no and yes, and if you plot this data, you have something like this. So you have this feature, x1, and ideally you would, you would like to predict uh, the variable y according to this x. You have some overlap in here, so of course you're not going to find any very perfect neural network training that. Okay? I'm going to use cross-validation instead of the traditional tenfold cross-validation. I'm going to use tenfold five times. This is called repeated cross-validation, and this is used in order to obtain some estimation of the error in the rock curves, okay? Let's initialize our seed, and let's fit a couple of models. This model is, uh, you have zero networks, uh, sorry, uh, one neuron in, in the hidden layer, so basically this is more or less like a logistic regression. And the second model is a multi-layer perceptron in which you are trying, you're just saying cross-validation to try different values of the decay rate and the size of the neuron. Okay, so you run this and you get something like that. Basically here you can see accuracy versus the number of hidden units. This is more or less the same as the logistic regression, three neurons, five, seven, and nine for different decay rates. I'm going to talk about that later. But the idea is that cross-validation is telling us that the best model in terms of accuracy is a neural network in which you have five neurons in the hidden layer. You can take into account that this is not very meaningful and, and this is part of the problem because as you can see here, accuracy is not so different. So th the difference between the worst case, which is 0.94, and the best case, which is probably 0.955, which is this point, is not that large. So I wouldn't use this sort of optimization because when the range of accuracy is not very large, basically you're overtraining your network. And I'm going to show you how. What about quantitative measures? So this is the rock curve and the area under the, under the curve is more or less the same, so it's 0.99. This, is, this means that your both neural networks, the one with one neuron and the one op optimized with cross-validation, are performing really well. And when you take a look at accuracy and kappa, you could say that the, the, the neural network with five neurons is better because you have a hard, uh, larger accuracy, larger kappa, but you can see the, the error bars here and you have a lot of overlapping. So there is this kind of old trick in, in statistics when, when this bar is overlapping the mean value of this other bar, uh, those results are not significantly different, okay? But what about the real predictions of the model? So let's take the first one. So let's take the uh, neural network with just one neuron. This is logistic regression, and you can see that it does a very good job. So you're pretty certain that this value is yes, you are pretty sure that this value is no, and you have some uncertainty here, which is actually in the region in which you have this overlapping. What about the other network? Oh, this is looks doesn't look so good. What is happening here? So this is a typical effect of overfitting. The problem is that you have five neurons, so you're overlapping five sigma functions, and somehow, probably because you have some concentration of points here, uh, you can see some gaps in this part of the graph, uh, th then probably the, this neural network is trying to overfit that part. Nevertheless, if you only look at metrics like 
I know the confusion matrix or accuracy sensitivity uh, specificity and so on you cannot distinguish between both methods more or less so you have uh, here one more uh, false positive and here you have one more false negative but, but in the end you cannot tell which network is better than the other but clearly our human brains would tell us that the green one is better than the blue one so the main message of this first part is that quantitative measures are not all in life so we need another metrics and other ways to look at the data and basically we need to understand how neural networks are trained so we have to go back and look behind the curtain and ask ourselves what is going on whenever we call the, the train function in the carrot package but before delving into the mathematics so l let's just stop the video and in another video i'm going to show you how to train a neural network well how to train anything using r